All right, so let's say you're just getting into making coffee at home and you're looking to buy your first brewer. So what should you get? Maybe an electric coffee machine, maybe an espresso machine or a French press. I mean, the sky's the limit. So you ask some of your friends and they're all like, bro, you should get a pour over, bro. It's like the best coffee ever, bro. So you're like, sweet, I'll get a pour over. But then you start doing some research and find out that a lot of the most popular models, say like the Hario V60 or the Chemex, you really need to have a gooseneck kettle and a scale and a grinder. And really, you should probably buy like really premium coffee to get your money's worth out of all that. And you start realizing this is kind of a big commitment, both money and time-wise, and maybe you're not ready for that. But that's when you discover the OXO Brew pour over. And today I want to show you that if this is your first brewer, you don't need to go buy a fancy pouring kettle or a scale or a grinder or any of that stuff. Yes, those are all great, but you can still make great coffee at home with just this thing. Let me show you. I have a lot of coffee brewers, French press, mocha pot, V60 pour over, Vietnamese Fien, Turkish Jezve, and even a Flair Espresso Press. So if I have all of these options, why do I have this ugly plastic thing? Well, we will get to why, but first, here's how it's different from my other pour over. The Hario V60 has a large hole in the bottom which allows water to easily exit the brewer. This allows you to control your brew time and the overall flavor by adjusting your coffee grind size, water input speed, and exactly how you pour, stir, and swirl as you mix the two together. Getting everything right will result in the best coffee you've ever had in your life, but it takes time and concentration. The OXO brew, however, only has a small hole designed to restrict the flow of water and keep the brewer full throughout the brewing process. This takes away the difficulty in achieving good coffee, but it eliminates the control necessary to achieve incredible coffee. Additionally, it comes with its own water measuring chamber that has small holes in the bottom. All of these things solve the two main problems that beginner coffee brewers encounter with pour overs. How long should I brew it? And how much water should I add? The small holes in both chambers control the brew time and the measurement lines tell you how much water to add. The ring on the base plate of the brewer is narrow enough to fit inside the lip of most coffee cups, while the bottom plate is large enough to fit over the mouth of a lot of carafes. All of these elements combine to make brewing easy, which is kind of the point. So to brew coffee with this thing, Take a Melita number no. two size filter and fold it along the seam. Open it up and insert it into the brewer. With your brewer set over a cup or carafe, rinse the filter with hot water to remove some of the flavor and warm up the brewer. Once all the water is drained, add some ground coffee. How much? Well, if you want to be precise, use a scale and measure out at a ratio of 60 grams of coffee per liter of water. But if you want to make things easy, go with about two and a half tablespoons per eight ounce cup of coffee. Add more if you want it stronger and less if you want it weaker. You can see the water chamber has measurements on the side for choosing your desired amount of coffee, but I don't think that they account for the significant amount of water absorbed by the coffee grounds, so I always add a bit more than my desired end amount. So at this point, all you have left to do is fill up the water chamber with water just off the boil, pop the lid on to retain the heat, and wait until it's done. Now, a couple notes while we're waiting. First, you may have noticed that I left the coffee grounds mounted up in the center of the brewer. This was intentional. Water only flows into the brewing chamber from the holes in the water chamber, and the holes are in a ring around the center. I have found that I get a better taste if I leave the grounds piled up under these holes, as the grounds out near the edges don't extract very well if I level everything off perfectly. Even with this technique, it tends to brew a hole in the center. Maybe someday I'll open up the holes in the water chamber a bit to let them flow better. Secondly, the all-plastic construction makes this brewer safe to handle because it does not absorb heat. And because it doesn't absorb heat and get hot itself, all the heat from the water stays in the water and helps maintain a good temperature for brewing coffee. Once it's done brewing, the lid becomes a tray for the brewer. Throw out the filter and grounds. Pour yourself a cup and enjoy. All right, so it's time to do a taste test and this is the first coffee I've had today. So um, I am definitely looking forward to the caffeine. So cheers. 
It has all the hallmarks of a pour over. It's clean, it's got a light body, there's no grit or heaviness, there's no real oil to speak of in the cup like you'd get from say a French press. Acidity and fruitiness have room to shine through and really I think that's why people rave about pour over is because it's so, it's so clean, it allows all of the subtlety and nuances of flavors to come through. Now I should say you can use this thing as a manual brewer. You do not have to use the little uh, shower cup thing, whatever you want to call it. You can absolutely use a pouring kettle and you will get a better extraction out of this. This is nothing more than basically a flat bottom style or a Melita style brewer. But for those of you who are just not used to getting the nuances out of coffee and don't really have any other equipment and don't know where to start, I would highly recommend this thing. As I said, the whole reason this thing is in my kitchen is for when I'm not really in a mood to be picky about my coffee. I just want some caffeine. I just want a decent hot cup of coffee and this thing is never going to blow your mind, but it's never gonna be terrible either. As long as you're using decent coffee and your water doesn't taste like crap to begin with, you're gonna get some all right coffee out of this. And you can get some pretty darn good coffee if you use high quality ingredients and brew it manually. Which is why this coffee nerd who is spoiled for choice still keeps this brewer and still uses it on a semi-regular basis. So go get yourself one. Cheers. Ah, James Hoffman would be proud.